About 19,000 vaccines given out as of midday across New York State, which is administering the program here, which makes it great that we can talk with the Lieutenant Governor, Kathy Hochul, about this and other topics. Lieutenant Governor, we always love having you on, and I, and I promise it's not just because you're an SU grad, but I promise you that does help a little bit. <laughs> thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me back on this show and giving me the opportunity to really communicate in real time what's going on with our response to the pandemic and now the vaccine. So thank you for the opportunity. Let's talk about the vaccine, the dis distribution program, uh, just about a week in here. How's it gone so far uh, statewide? Well, as you can imagine, this is basically a military operation. I mean, it takes a massive mobilization effort, identifying where it should go, how to get it out there, how to literally get into people's arms based on a priority system that dovetails with what the CDC has proposed in terms of the priority individuals. So it's been going very well. And I think that we just have to step back and take a breath and say, this is phenomenal news that we're even able to have a vaccine available to anyone by the end of 2020. We could not have foreseen this back in March. People were talking several years down the road. So we are definitely on the road to recovery with this vaccine being available now. Are you getting what you expected so far from Pfizer? Um, could this possibly go any quicker? Or are we at the right pace and getting what we need for this first week here? Well, this is exactly what we were told. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we were actually told that uh, originally that the doses were five per vial and now we're finding out maybe it's six or seven so we're actually getting a little more oh. volume and, and opportunities to serve more people than we had anticipated but they had said they're trying to get 20 million out for the entire country by the end of december so based on current supply chains that looks good we have our we know our number was 170,000 for the state of New York, and we allocated that around the state. But next, uh, the next wave is going to be Moderna, which mm -hmm. we're expecting about 340,000. So it's going to keep coming. And there's other companies as well that are in the pipeline. So at some point, this will be not even talking about who gets it first. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be available to everybody. But we're probably uh, not till about March, April, May for that scenario to happen. But this is really good news. Um, the governor mentioned today at his briefing that uh, he's definitely going to get it. I assume you'll get the vaccine as well. When would you expect that, that both of you might get it? Well, we'll talk about that. We want to make sure that the people who need it the most go mm -hmm. first. That's my view and the governor's view. So we did not put our arms out just yet. But at some point when it's available to more people, we want to demonstrate that it is safe. I'd be very happy to do that and do it publicly. So uh, that time will come. It will certainly help because, as you know, I don't have to explain it. You have the numbers right in front of you. You look at this every single day. We are not in a good place with this pandemic right now. People letting their guard down, whether it's Thanksgiving, whatever it is, the numbers are not good. Governor mentioned that um, a statewide pause is, is all about us. Is that a could? Have there actually even been talks that it might happen? Well, I think we're just trying to give people a reality check. You know, we don't want surprises. We've been very candid from the very beginning about what could happen if people's behavior does not change. We also want to say on the flip side, if the behavior changes, that people who thought it was okay to travel over Thanksgiving or have larger gatherings or didn't wear their mask when they're within six feet of people or uh, you know, brought in relatives that they hadn't seen who hadn't been tested, you know, that's, that, we all saw that effect from Thanksgiving. But if people are listening this time and say, you know what, eh, that didn't work out so well. We have more people in the hospitals, our infection rates higher. As a result, restaurants in our orange zone areas are shut down, hurting the economy, hurting those people, their employees. I think there's now people can say there's a direct correlation between their behavior and the infection rate and whether or not they're shut down. So the governor and I are saying, okay, we can also turn this around. Mm -hmm. You know, just think if we can stop that behavior, be smart for the next two, three weeks, by middle of January, we should really see a downward turn with the number of people being vaccinated now, but also driving down the infection rate while we're increasing hospital bed capacity. Watch all the national news. You see people now not able to have ICU beds mm -hmm. available to them in our own country because there's so many people in the hospital. So that's what we're fighting against. But the positive news, we can turn this around. We've done it before. Let's try to do it again. Um, maybe the last thing I'm going to be able to get in with you time wise here, um, this federal stimulus package in Washington, it seems like it's going to leave again state and local governments with that direct relief out. Um, I'm sure you probably don't have an answer as why, but how badly is that going to hurt state and local governments? 
This money is desperately needed from the federal government. We've been sounding the alarm since the first stimulus package early in the spring, and they did not include state and local governments. So we'll have to manage. I mean, there are going to have to be some serious cuts, uh, certainly in the early spring, if we're going to have to put our budget together without having that money. But we also are optimistic that while we may not get it as part of this down payment and money that needs to go to individuals and businesses, which is critical, we want to make sure they're taken care of. But state and local government money is not just used to balance our budgets. That's used to pay for first-line individuals on the front lines, teachers, healthcare workers, police officers, the people getting the vaccine mm -hmm. out there. So this is a desperate situation. We really hope when Joe Biden's sworn in, if we have a Democratic Senate, which is a, is a possibility depending on an upcoming election, that we could have the right people in place who understand how important this is and to get that money out to state and local governments as soon as possible. We needed it yesterday. Sure did. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, can't thank you enough. We always love having you on. Thanks so much and uh, can't wait to have you back on again. Thank you very much. Look forward to it.